Hey, I'm Charlie. Thank you for watching our podcast. And uh, this is my wife, Athena. Hi. And we're here to help you guys and talk and just, we're here. We're just Share excited. our life with Share you life. Yeah. and this entrepreneurial journey that we're on through the raiseupmindset.com uh, website, which is where our podcasts live. And we are on the Raise Up podcast right now. That's where we're on. We're on the podcast. That's why we're here. So one of the topics that we were going to discuss today is generosity and how that is a common thread through successful businesses or entrepreneurs. So I look at generosity being one of the key components to the success in our business. Definitely is one of them. I mean, <clears throat> you know, um, my wife has a great saying that you... Um, you can't take withdrawals until you make deposits. And <clears throat> what that means to me, <clears throat> as we are going down the line and we are working with the city and the public and our community and things like that, um, how can we expect them just to use us if we don't, we're not willing to work back with them and do things with yeah. them? So um, in the beginning, man, I can tell you how much limos and cars and different functions and things that we went to that we just gave to everybody. And it was super great because it really got our names out there and got us up and it was very community basis. But on the other part of that is like you, you have to kind of more pick and choose sometimes yeah. what is your beliefs and what you're doing and who you're giving to and what you're doing and actually have some meaning behind it. And then I get somebody that just calls me up because we're, uh, they're a 501 C3 and they, we're a tax write off and they want, you know, a $4,000 car to drive their people around. It's not that that's not important. We just kind of choose a little bit more and more deliberately who we give to and what we do. A yeah. lot of different things on functionality, um, or it used to be a shotgun blast. We kind of hit everybody. You know, we just kind of were sending out to a lot yes. of people. Yes, we were definitely. Uh, we were. We used it as almost like a marketing piece early on, where we went to a lot of events, we did a lot of networking, and we gave what we could in usually in services like airport transfers or we we do a limo thing but that um that was that really helped us build the relationships that we have today just getting us into the door yeah. and now i would say that it's definitely dialed into a more that was a very important season of the business but now we're dialed into more specifics and and i think really where i personally land is uh, the community children that are in, in our area. Those are, uh, clauses that I really personally put my treasure and my time behind because I just believe that the children need us in our communities. And so I'm definitely a supporter of, uh, the, the people that are supporting the orphans and then also the people that are raising up the teen parents in our community especially and helping them along with their babies so those are just some areas that i got super specific on and now i don't um i don't give to everything anymore and i know you don't give to every single thing that no. comes along but when it makes sense it makes sense yeah and you know we have a lot of people that come to us all the time and ask us uh, to help and do some things and we 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 vet them a little bit more and do some stuff but it's not that we don't want to give out to everybody. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of resources taken up and a lot of different things that get taken on our place. How many drivers we have, how much time we can use them. And then we have other commitments that we have to do yeah. towards our clients now that we didn't have as much then. And we had a lot of drivers and we didn't have as much to work from. So it was a win-win. They got to do some work. They got to do some community events. <clears throat> the object is, is giving. And I, I guess on this side is what yes. we're talking about. It's like, we will give to a great cause and something that we believe in and what's going into it. Um, some of the church functions and events and things that we've done, we've really wanted to help with. Political, we've helped with. We've helped with some things that are really with our beliefs and what we want to do. And then we help financially on top of it now more than we did before. Last time it was a lot of uh, in-kind giving. Yes, yes. And now <clears throat> I want to say it's more intentional because in-kind is really good for us, but a lot of these places need cash and they need money. And we realize that. And then the in-kind for us is much easier because it's it's having one of our vehicles out and, and it's cash don't get me wrong when you're giving a gift certificate for a limo or whatever there's expenses behind there's that. expenses behind that and uh, a lot of companies like you're giving away so much charlie that 
don't you like? I'm like, oh, it's just, you know, six hours in a limo, but that's six hours in a limo that I can't rent out that day. I can't sell out to somebody else. Six hours of more wear and tear on that vehicle because everything has a lifespan on it. So when you're asking for dips and doing things like that, you have to realize some of this stuff is really, it, it, it hits a real big financial bottom and you think it doesn't and it really does. So you really have to um, be more intentionality, I think is what we're doing now is being intentional. But we probably give just as much as we did before. I think we probably give more now, but it's yeah. different. <sighs> it looks different. And so maybe a organization that we wouldn't normally support that has a good cause, maybe they get a discount instead of a full blown, like completely comped ride. So that, that the other resources are funneling more towards what, what are, are more in line with the the lane that we're supporting because like we mentioned in the last podcast when you stay in your lane you can really put some solid energy to that and you can really build it up to a, a higher place as opposed to just doing a bunch of stuff in all these little areas it, it, it doesn't get the momentum that it normally I mean would otherwise so I think that's a piece of it absolutely you know, and I think I brought up a good point that I should have brought up in our previous podcast that we just talked about was seeing your lane and one of the things you're doing is, is there's a number amount of hours and is it 10,000 hours I think is that but you're considered an expert according to some people. yeah and there's some there's some people that says that you spend 10,000 hours or more into a job or a field that you're doing as an entrepreneur or whatever else it might be that you're more considered an expert in your field I and mean, uh, at 25 years we can tell you that we have way past 10,000 hours I mean <laughs> we're in the 100,000 hour range whatever else it might be but we're 24 7 7 days a week 365 days a year yeah. no matter what happens some kind of form of information is being filtered to us through our team our management team whatever else it is be it an accident be it that somebody got hurt be it that we landed a new contract whatever it is we're getting filtered information to us all the time and um, it, when you're seeing your lane that is a good piece of it um, also on the other side of it we get hit for the the different various things that we need help with. And it's not just the money part of it. We'll, we'll get called by our, our, our public officials, things that are things that are coming on that are important to them, that they have important people coming in. And we'll get contacted directly by senators' aides, mayor's aides, whatever yeah. else it might be, that, hey, we have these certain people coming in, uh, other foreign dignitaries, all these other things. And they know that they have that one-on-one. -on -one. And part of being an entrepreneur and giving back is giving yourself access to us that they do it. That's that's a giving back. You don't usually get to talk to a lot of CEOs mm -hmm. of different companies and have that one-on-one -on -one with it. You usually don't have your senator's telephone numbers or the mayor's telephone number where you can call them. And if you don't abuse it and you use it for a tool or you use it because it's a like-mindedness that you have with these people, yeah. they don't mind you having those numbers. I mean, you know, when you can call your local mayor in town and talk to him about some things or issues or things that you think is really important, that benefits him, the city, and, and the uh, us as the customers would be his customer, would be his constituents, <clears throat> it's, it's nice to be able to have that ear to be able to do it. And that's, I think, the generosity of us giving throughout the city is they look at us as a partner within the city. Yeah. And so I know it's a huge roundabout coming around it, but you got to really look at that generosity is just not financial it's not giving a vehicle it's giving your time yeah. and one of the things that we want to do is the being generous is is giving back our time to make these podcasts to be able to talk to you guys about what the next level you can do to be that person in your city or your town or your community or your industry how can you make that happen for you yeah. and that's being generous by you giving your time and working with an individual or somebody else that's there that needs that extra step. Like they could be really struggling on something very it simple, would be simple for, you. for us. Like, yeah. you know, we would have the answer in two seconds because we went through that lifetime, you know, 14, 18 years ago, yeah. we went yeah. through that stage. And, yeah, like that's not a challenge. And, and that's the part of like giving back to your community. Like if it's not hurting you and he's not a direct competitor with you, and even if he is, he might become a partner of yours. He might yeah. be your, he might be your secondary. He might be the guy that, if you want a cleaning business or something else that's doing it and you can't get to this job, you sub it out to him, but he does the quality of work you're looking for. And now you figured out that he's not as busy as this. You might make a 10, 15, 20% on that. You're giving him 80% of something he didn't have anything of before. And that is the partnership that you want to deliver in the, in the giving back and doing this. Things, you know, he might make a little scratch off. It's it. really about connection and building those relationships. And I think that that's really why we're here is building those connections and not being on an island. And I think that's been really a theme that we've had over the last few podcasts is it's like, you are as successful as you allow. 
and allowing looks like so many different things. But when it comes to this piece of generosity, generosity, what I teach our children is that generosity keeps us from a scarcity mindset. And the scarcity mindset is the killer of dreams and of living your potential and being as free as you want to be. When you have this sense that I need to keep this all to myself, I need to keep the information close, I, I don't have enough, that's really living in this lower space and, and it doesn't serve any business that I've ever seen or any business owner. So this this idea around generosity like charlie mentioned one of the things that i saw in a season for you was you were on a lot of boards mm -hmm. that you donated that time but that you got to sit next to people that you wouldn't otherwise have got a chance to get to know and that was really a, a piece of generosity that came back to us as well and you know and if you do those guys um say you're looking to uh, boost your business with certain things, you kind of find out what different people's goals and what they like and what they enjoy. And <clears throat> you never hard sell, never go into these people, going into them and like, hey, I'm part of this, I'm part of this thing. And hey, you should do business with us. And let that come naturally. If you're yeah. in that board and you're doing things and you're helping what they believe in and what you believe in and you're making something happen, it's going to eventually come up like, hey, how's business? How's things going? That, that opportunity will come to itself and it's... <clears throat> It's always better if the person initiates it that you're looking for, if they initiate the conversation there because it's it's an open mat. It's like the door opening and says, come yeah. in. If you kind of hard sell it and you you get to the door and there's two Jehovah Witnesses or two people or salespeople or something that's at your door and it's Sunday and you're wanting to watch football and they're they're hammering you down. They're saying, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this. You're like, oh, shut the door. I'm like, this is not what I'm looking for. And now you have that bad taste in your mouth. So as, as, as doing it, if you let them be the person to come to you, you open that door and you don't hard sell again. You just talk to them. Yeah, business is good. This is what we're doing. We're looking to do this. You know, if there's anything we can ever do to help, please just let me know. Absolutely. Leave that open invitation there and leave it there at that. And then he's going to think of something. And then, you know what? Uh, like uh, there's a person that we were talking to yesterday that has been so helpful with us and we're designing a new home and we're doing some stuff and his birthday, his daughter's birthday is Thursday. I'm like, Listen, every time I have a thing I'm doing for you, I'm always asking this question. How can I do something for you? Can I, your daughter is turning 16. Can I send a limit to go pick her up and take her out for a couple of days, a couple of hours and do something with that for your family? And it's like, oh, you don't have to do that. No big deal. But to me, it's me giving back to him because he's offering his time, his advice. He's helping me build this beautiful lake yes. home that we're building. And he's taking that time and he's given me great solid advice that when maybe it cost me eight or $10,000 to fix later, that I didn't realize it yeah. was. So how can I give back to that person? He's fairly well off, he's doing something. I can give him something that he doesn't possess and he doesn't have and he didn't even think of. He never asked for it, he never asked for a single thing. That was him opening the door to me and we opened the door back to him. So hopefully he's gonna say yes and hopefully we'll get an answer back from him. And then his daughter will probably have the best 16th birthday ever and it was something cool and he looks like a rock star to his dad and I've made a deposit into him as he's made deposits into me. Yeah, and so it's that, I was just going to make that point, it's this continual uh, message of reciprocating deposits. So you make a deposit and you don't, you don't have attached to it this expectation that no you're going to make a withdrawal. You just, you don't assume and you don't have the expectation, but it always will come back to you, always. You know, and, and sometimes it comes back to you in ways that you just don't know. That's the thing yeah. about it. You just don't realize that this person's going to come back to you. Um, the gentleman I'm talking about, I met two or three years ago on the lake and he's always kept in contact and he's always made that connection and we talk and we see each other and now we're kind of developed this friendship and this thing that we talk. We're going to be neighbors. More. We're going to be neighbors with him and we're meeting new with these new neighbors that people we've all known. We all run in inner circles, but we don't run in the same circle. Yeah. And so it's kind of neat to be able to see this stuff. And these guys are like-minded people. These are people that want to be uh, in a really nice place and do things. So it's really cool that opportunities you get to by just opening your mind and taking those blinders off and, and saying, okay, 
I'm willing to trust and receive and do some of this stuff. And now that we're just getting this. And so anyways, I'm super excited about it. I, 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 I've never built a home. We have never built a home. We've always remodeled homes and done things. So we've never done something from the ground up of having an architect and all this other stuff from, from all the way from the foundation up and how many bedrooms. And, you know, we're kind of the people like want to have a bedroom, a bathroom in our bedroom. So we're like, every bedroom's going to have a bathroom, you know? And so we're kind of going like, that was one of my requirements is every bathroom or every bedroom needs to have a bathroom. Yeah, because you go to people's houses and we have some great friends. It's just friends. awkward. You yeah, know? and then you're walking down the hallway and you're you know, trying and, to like, and, and, and it's hopefully something will be down that hallway and you're taking all your clothes there and doing this stuff. So we love to host people. One of our, I think that one of our powers and one of the things that we like to do is we like to have people around. We like to have family around. We like to have friends around. We like to host people and we have a plethora of toys and things that we're doing. Because you like put, to host. Because we yes. like to host. So, I mean, you can't have two jet skis. You can have four. You have to have six jet skis, you know, because we have the kids that are two and then we have some other family friends. And if they bring friends, we need to have enough there because it's because we want to be able to treat people to something that we probably didn't get treated too much as when we were younger. And we wanted to make sure that we were being, um, we, we, we wanted to be a good host, I guess. That's well, you know, I think it really speaks to generosity runs, especially right through your core because you have such a gratitude around um, those that have really lifted you oh, in times sorry. of need that you just you and especially little Charlie our youngest son he loves to host people too and so there's always this question how many people can I invite yeah can I bring four people up this weekend four I mean we haven't been home for one weekend yet I don't know we just knock it down to two you know let's yeah let's but make that's... this realistic goals because as he's hosting we're hosting yes. because but we want to empower him to do that because that's going to be one of his superpowers. Yes. And we say superpowers. What we mean by superpowers is he has an enlightened or an heightened sense of doing something that he enjoys and he likes to do. And uh, he's good at it. He's a good host. He likes to host it. And that's what we call a superpower. So when we say superpowers, we want you to think that we have a big diamond in our chest. We have a Superman under it. We have a power that we feel like we're called to or we want to do and that we're willing to do and and sometimes there's a lot of uh there's a lot of work behind it yes and so that really makes it um uh, for us to enjoy it and want to continue doing it it is there and don't get me wrong sometimes it's pretty taxing like when you're cooking for 40 people and you're doing it and you're hosting and you're getting jet skis ready and you're taking on boats in the night you're whacked out and you're just like Ugh. but you're like you know the next morning everybody gets up there and, and, and they're like man we had the best day ever and like we yeah. had some friends up that are friends and employees of ours and are friends and like they took their kids out jet skiing and they said, this is the best day ever. They've it had was one of their, their birthdays life. in their life. And I thought to myself, how can that be true? We get to do this yeah. anytime we want to. But when you look at it through the eyes of them, yeah. that is not an option for them. And so when we could see somebody like that, that was like more lifting than it would be like, you know, having five of my best friends over there, just knowing we had the place and doing it and stuff, hanging out with them. But hearing their story about that was like, Man, we made somebody's day. Like, they're going to talk about this forever. I mean, this is something they're going to say, yeah, I was at Big Lake and we did this and this. And we took off in jet skis for six hours and we ran out of fuel. We had to go get more fuel. We had to do this yeah. stuff because that was something that they didn't get to enjoy and do. And, uh, I, you know, I can only tell you the amount of people that took the time in me in Cordova and fishing and Jerry and I got stuck in Kodiak and he was willing to buy me a plane ticket to come home and be able to pay it off by working for him. Let me live in his loft in the shop and then let me eat the food that was from the boat that was the stuff of there. I mean, when I didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out, but people were like, hey, I believe in stepping you. Stepping forward. Stepping forward. So when we look at that and we look at other people, how can we step forward for those individuals that we feel that have the potential and want to get it, but they're just blocked a little bit and they don't have that... They don't have that belief in their self, so we're trying to instill them into it. Yeah, is that, is sometimes, it? yeah. I, I mean, I've told our, our kids before, especially during the teenage moments, and I just tell them, well, I'm just going to believe for both of us right now, or I'm just going to love you for both of us right now because I see that you're in a valley. And, um, you know, I, I another piece I think when people especially follow your page because you are so good at posting is that we show them what's possible like the pictures that are in our Facebook are actual moments of us enjoying our life and and like living in this space that we just 
we have a good day no matter what's going on. And we have some bad days too, but it's you know not what? a bad day it's though. Not, what it is is it's a little bit lower it. than the day before yes. sometimes, but it's never a bad day. Yeah, I should rephrase that. It, it's there's days that you will not have that high energy and that high frequency that you would maybe the day before, mm -hmm. but it's just readjusting yourself. Sometimes that we have to readjust ourselves, like one of us is not having a good morning or it's something's not the frequency is there, and then the other one will be a little bit more upset and, and or just not to have the patience for it, but you can hit the reset button anytime. You can hit the reset and say, yeah. let's start it over. Let's 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 get past this point and we have sixteen more hours in a day. Let's enjoy the last sixteen hours of the days. And posting those pictures about going out and doing things. I mean, I am a selfie. Like, if you look at my phone, there's probably 8,000 selfies of myself, my wife. With the my dog. kids, with me. With the grandkids. Me on the, on the beach, uh, sitting there tanning, whatever it is. Because that is a moment I want to go back in memory to know that that was a happy time for me. My yeah. wife's like, why do you have so many Why do you have no shirt on in the selfie on I'm the like, beach? I'm like, why are you not wearing a shirt? But you know what? Shirt? I was tanned and there's this background. It was beautiful and I wanted to take a picture. But you know what? I mean, I'm not posting that picture up there. But that is a time that I was like at the Steel Point Lodge. And I you was were sitting on there. You, you're, it's and, a and memory it's, for it's you. It's a thing for me to go back because uh, as we get older, things like that, we want to remember what that was and what was that day look like. And I have like 71,000 photos mm -hmm. on my phone. Yeah. I mean, I buy the biggest phone just to be able to keep my memory bank going up. But those are memories for me to go back and look at at times. And then when they come back and said, this is what you're doing last year. Like we were in Tennessee last year at this time. We were oh, in really? Tennessee for our inner circle group or we were there for our um, 2020 group that we were down there for or we were there and there for the uh, um, NLA National Limousine yeah, Association. Yeah, it was the NLA. Yeah. And we were down there and that was our first time in Tennessee and we were like, this place is so cool. Like it's a little mini Vegas going down that main street. The food, the music was excellent. Yeah. And that was like something I could take back and say, you know, I remember that thing. And that takes you right back to that moment. Yeah. And we all have those compartments in our brain that you had something super special happen. So... Anyways, I, I just, I go on about that because that's all important stuff. Um, and we want to show people that we're having a good time. And part of our gratitude in doing things like, you know, we had some friends come up and stay up at this, at our lake houses and stay there. And then when we got through with that trip in, in Tennessee, they're like, why don't you come out to our lake house and let us host you? And Bill and Bree Faith were just amazing. And there was actually another couple that we're good friends with, Jared and Maria. And then Becky came too. Yeah. And we're called the Good Hit, what, the Good Hoodie Gang. Yeah. We're the good ha hoodie gang. We're not really a gang, but we're just a gang of friends that go to different places and meet up and do stuff together. And they host us at this most amazing lake. It's called Smith Lake. And it was in Alabama. Alabama. It was very warm. The water was so warm. It was so nice. We went on this pond too, but we had the best time. We we laughed. We we rubbed each other. We like and I said ribbed each other, rubbed each oh, other. Not rubbed each other. He meant rubbed ribbed. each other in funny, ribbed each other. But it was just like one of the funniest times. And they host us, they had amazing food and they had these sweatshirts made for us. And it was it was all the deposits we made in our friendship with those people yeah. and talking. And I called him just yesterday. Of course, he's busy doing something. He hasn't got back to me, but he always gets back to me. And and, and I, I love putting those deposits in our friendships because it, it, we all think about what's the next big trip because JR, you're slacking. You're the next one supposed to be throwing the next big trip for us. And Becky, you're next after that. But we want to be able to hang around more like-minded people like that. So we're getting that. And it's it's neat. It's it's fun. It's creating a space where you're getting momentum in the things that bring you joy. And so like Charlie mentioned before, all of those photographs that he keeps on his phone, yeah, they, they sync to the cloud too, but he can get them right from his phone. And it reminds him of a moment that he was in joy or that he was in peace or that he was feeling relaxed and he can go back to that. Just like some people do these like memory boards or uh, dream boards or whatever. It's, it's really, it's another strategy that you use to keep, keep that positive momentum going in yeah, your life. Yeah, I look at those all the time. And one thing I really like is when we're posting those pictures, it inspires other people. Yes. I can't even tell you how many people, I mean, I think I have 3,500 followers on my Facebook now. And I can't even tell you how many of those people say, I live so vicariously through you and your wife and your kids and your vacations. And I just, I wish you'd get to that point. I'm like, well, how can we get you there? I mean, where do you want to go? What, what, what does that make it look like where you want to go, what we're doing? We don't have the most picture perfect lives, guys. Don't understand. I mean, we still we, go to work. We, we still, still do we, we still live with our teenage kids. We still have to deal with drama and things that come up yep. in our lives. It's just how you take it. And I tell you, this last six months has been a lot different for me since we've gotten some other inner circle helps that we're doing on some other things we're doing. But like, life is your life right now. I mean, this is your life. You get it. Get to spend, and you get to spend it how you choose to and how you want to. 
and if you're around people that are positive and good and easy going, then you're going to enjoy this to no end. And if you're in a place that it's around a lot of negative people and a lot of people that don't have things and they're, they're just jealous and they're saying, you just do this and this, it's probably not the energy level and frequency of people you want to be around. So I say that because we want to be around high frequency people. We want to be around people that are happy to be where they're at. And we want people to be joyful and nice and kind. So Work we can reciprocate it and the same thing we can do because we want to have that same thing and we want to do the same thing for other people. So Yeah, yeah. And I think part of doing the podcast is is connecting with others who want that as well. Like this is this is a piece where we can connect with people out in the world who are on the same track. They, they want growth in their life. They want to be a, in relationship with people who are um, making it happen and who are taking their challenges with an opportunity to learn something instead of getting offended and shutting down and, uh, and like being angry. And I think that there's so much that we can do when we just like, take the opportunity to be transparent. And over the, the last podcasts that we've filmed over time, there's been moments where we've had some really transparent moments. And I don't think you can really get connected with somebody if you don't step into that part of generosity and actually allow yourself to be vulnerable and to share some things that, hey, yeah, this was really, this was really a, a bad mistake that I made early on, but I got a hold of it. I figured it out, and now I can help others out of that 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 valley. I think it's being real too. But the problem is, is that we're sitting here and talking to you, and there's nothing that's not real going on yeah. with us right now. There's there's no pretentiousness. There's nothing that we're saying that we're better than anybody else. There's nothing going on that we we feel that we're better than anybody else. We're not we're not better. We've just realize where we want to be at in life and, it, and if anybody knows me i tell it how it is i mean fuck it, it if it's red it's red if it's blue it's blue i'm going to tell you how it is and i'm sorry that's just who i am but i want to be the most real authentic person i am and so if i drop an s-bomb or i drop an f-bomb in here it's because it's me being real it's not me being fake and saying oh yeah life is great and we live in this glass palace and nothing ever goes wrong and we have no skeletons in our closets holy sugar that's the total opposite are, are, it isn't so absolute. Let me rephrase that. There is skeletons in our closet. There's things that I've done in my past I'm not very proud of. It's who I am today. It's yeah. it's not looking backwards of where I was at five years ago. It's who I bring myself every day to where I'm at now. Who is my best? Who's the best Charlie can be today? And who's the best I can be tomorrow? And realizing that I don't have to re reflect on negativity or past things or things going on. You could, it's very easy to see the path forward. We're not looking backwards all the time. We're looking forward. And we want you to do the same thing too. Like, I mean, everybody has had a past or whatever else that's going on, or they had some mistakes they made that they wish they can take back. You can't take that mistake back. The only thing you can do is not do that same mistake going forward and go forward with it. I mean, be forward, be intentional, be your, your, where your life goals are going to be at and be happy. If you're not happy, then what are you doing? I mean, if you have all this money and everything and you're miserable, nobody wants to hang out with you. You don't want to do anything. You have a lot of materialistic stuff that means zero at the end. So we want you to be happy and you want to do things. And then, you know what? If, if it thrills you to go out and treat your team members to a barbecue, if it thrills you to go do something, you know, one of the things that we like to do, and I know that Athena and I do, and we talk about it when we go places, we go to restaurants with a group of people. Like we were just at one of our inner circle groups and we were in there and you know, we were, we were asked to go out and dinner and I thought to myself, and I, Athena says, hey, you know, we should probably pick up the tap tonight. And I thought, you know what? I don't know if that's going to be appropriate because we were invited by uh, someone else, someone else and uh, very important, somebody else. And that's, and I don't know if that would be appropriate. But then when we were sitting there, it made me spin my head because Athena put things in my head that I, that there's been like a cycle. And I think to myself, you know, there's probably nobody that's ever treated this person because as we go out, sometimes we are the ones that will just go pick up the bill because it's what we feel like we should do. And there's probably nobody that's ever done this for this other person. So we stuck around it and then we got narked out by somebody that we did it. But they were totally shocked. Like they, they never had done that. And it wasn't because we were trying to impress them. It wasn't yeah, anything no, that was there. It was, just it was like us giving back to them because he's given so much to us that we wanted to give back to him and let him know we appreciate you. And everything that you're doing for us is such a positive note that how can I show my appreciation? You have whatever you want to do. 
but probably not a lot of people have done this for you. It's so. a gesture. It's not about the money. It's just a gesture it of was. being willing. And I think that there are so many gestures of generosity that we could just give to people in our daily life that have nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with t taking a bunch of our time. It's about just allowing them to be who they are and to focus on who you need to be. If I, I think that is one of the greatest generosities that we can give for, for people. And some people look at it like maybe it's giving grace to somebody, but really I think it's taking an even step back to stop judging. Just let them be who they want to be and you get to be who you want to be. And you might not be getting off on the same stop if you're on the same bus together, but they just get to be who they are. And when, when they see things in you that they appreciate, they're going to tap you. They're going to ask you, Hey, what's going on with you? Like normally you're like going off on a tangent and you haven't been doing that lately. And it's like, we realize that there are just things that just, we shouldn't, shouldn't be in this, this situation of like complaining about. And it's almost always when we get into that space of complaining, we're probably judging somebody. And the truth is, is that without the contrast in our lives, we don't know how good we have it. And so we really, really need it. It's not just a factor of, I just want to have an easy street life and everything's going great. It's the contrast is so important because as you can see, Charlie turned that contrast into this deep gratitude for how others stepped forward into his life. And now he translates that into generosity in his own life. Yeah, and I feel like it's, uh, if I was so gratitude back then, how can I be gratitude and show that forward? Because that person may be not be alive anymore. That person's maybe not there and I can't show it to him. So maybe somebody showed something to him when he was going up and that's what it is. So it's like a pay it forward almost. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so that's what I feel like I'm doing sometimes. I'm paying it forward and making sure that I am giving out what I could do and what I'm willing to do. And guys, it, like I said, we talk about monetary things. We talk about this and we talk about time. It, it, it's as easy as telling somebody that they look really nice as they go by or like the lady. Was Don't riding, make it weird. Yeah. It, but even like the lady that was riding the bicycle that was looking back and forth, we were blocking the lane off for her so she can go. And yeah. then we told her, you can do it. You know, just something, just a little bit of encouragement that she was maybe having a little bit of a struggle that somebody said, you can do it. And that gave her that positive thing that she needed. I mean, um, that, and then she was just bicycling. And then we saw these people trying to cross the, the road for horses and they were looking back and forth in the cars there. So I just blocked off both lanes, letting them know that they, this is safe for you guys. I'm yeah. blocking it off that you and your horses can go by and they wave and they're appreciative about it. But it's small things like that, that you can do for people you don't even know or in, in perfect strangers that they'll never know. But they're like, that was super cool, you know? And that was yeah. something that was a yeah. positive mark for their day that you could give back. You know, this reminds me of a story. Uh, do you remember the couple? She says uh, do you remember the couple that we moved next door to when we moved into Bayshore? And they were like, oh, we've met you before, our neighbors. And come to find out, we had been, uh, we had we had taken our grandkids or somebody to breakfast that morning. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking and about. And you bought it's their breakfast. It's, it's not the next door neighbor, it was two doors over. And, you bought their yeah. breakfast. And I didn't even, I don't think I even knew that. Yeah. You know, just sometimes you feel called to do something. And sometimes you just go over and you take care of it and you do something and you just leave and you don't walk out and you just take care of it because something tells you that that's the right thing to do. And I, I don't know what the reason where it was, but I do you just, remember. You decided to buy their breakfast. I was and like, then, hey, can I pick up their breakfast? And then it was like, I don't know if it was a couple years later. Like, several, several years later. Yeah, we ended up being their neighbors and they're like, we've met you guys before, or we, we know who you are. And, and it was because they remembered that gesture. We bought their breakfast. And for whatever reason, one morning we just, you decided to buy their breakfast and but so you just deposits in. <laughs> you don't even know like that's the other piece too is that when you hear that like voice inside that little prompting inside you to do something that is an act of kindness like just follow it and there's so many of us that get that and, and sometimes i can tell you i haven't followed through on 100 percent of them but i try to it's even been to the point that i've seen somebody that looks like they're really struggling for money or food and i've gone up and given them 20 bucks for 100 bucks and said here you go and they said, you have no idea what this means to me. And it was something that was telling me subconsciously, like, 
there's panhandlers everywhere. And I, I didn't give it up to any of them. But that one person, something said, you need to do this. And I just said, okay, no problem. And I just went over and gave it to them. And they said, you have no idea what this means to me. You have no idea. And it wasn't like, oh, thanks, brother. I'm going to go get some food with this. I'm going to go do this. Or I'm not going to do this. Or I'm going to go get a room. We have no idea what this did to them. But like, they were praying. They were asking. They were looking for some higher power to just give them a helping hand. And, and, and it's not even that. It's pulling over to help somebody with a car. It's, it's, it's as much as somebody's stressed out. Uh, I can't even tell you how many people have said that their husband was a large guy or something like that. There's a baby in line. She's like, would you mind holding my baby? I'm like, who the hell gives somebody their baby to a, a perfect stranger. stranger? And I got this baby in my arm. The baby's looking at me all happy because her dad might look like me. Or You probably it, f gave off that this energy, energy and this lady's of their me dad. This kid. I look at the thing, I'm like, I would never fuck me to my kid anybody. Well, what's wrong with this lady? But I didn't realize what was going on in her mind that she felt so trustworthy that she was going to her kid to do that. I'm like... And in my mind, I'm like, this lady's whacked. I mean, so then I, I, your willingness to just and I did. I held the kid, and then she was getting separated. She was, thank you so much. My husband's looks so much like you, and I'm sure the baby thinks that you're a part of it. And the baby's all happy. And I'm like, my son, I'm like, ah, this is gets scared. But I didn't realize that what that meant. I mean, mm -hmm. for somebody to hand me their kid that wasn't, I was a relative. I was in the line at Fred Myers. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? But. You don't realize the blessings that you get or give sometimes just to something so so benign, something that didn't really mean and a whole you lot of did time. not allow that limiting belief of what is this lady doing no, to like, like keep you from kid. that space of generosity. Yeah, yeah. So generosity comes in all different ways. It, it just comes in every different way. It's it's taking the time to listen to an employee's problems. It's taking the time to listen to your friend that has a real problem that's going on that you give solid advice. Or, you know, sometimes it's not giving any advice. It's just listening. Sometimes just letting them get it out yep. and then wait for them to ask the question, what would you do? And if they don't ask the question, you then you don't have to, to answer. answer it. You don't. You say, well, thank you for telling me that. Yeah. You know, I ask the kids sometimes, I'm like, do you want help with this or you just want a hearing? Like, which one is it? The biggest thing about my wife and Brian, our, our dear pastor, Brian would tell me, he's like, Charlie, all you have to do is listen to your way for 10 to 15 minutes a day and don't solve any of the issues or problem. Like, that's like nails on the chalkboard, right? What are you talking about? She wants to tell me about a problem she's had because I'm a fixer. I, when I hear the problem, I want to get it off my plate. I want to fix it. She's like, I have this problem, this problem. And in my mind, I'm already mapping out the solutions. I'm boom, 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 boom. And then I'm like, well, you did this. She goes, I don't want you to tell me what to do. I just want to tell you what's going on. I'm like, well, I'd rather go through a root canal right now. I mean, you got to tell me a problem I can't fix, I can't do. But now I can sit back and say, okay. It's about connection. It's yeah, not about... It's, 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 it's not about me being a saver or her hero or a person that's going to go fix the problem. It, she or somebody else or somebody you need just needs a person to listen to them, mm -hmm. get it off their chest. And then if they ask for advice, give it to them. And if they say, what do you think? They say, well, what would you like me to do with this information? Do you want help? Do you want what I would do? Or do you just need somebody to listen to you? Yeah. And so that is all about giving. Every one of those things is about giving. I know this wasn't on the business concept as much. On this it, it is really a business concept is, because you and have too, to have this, this space to be able to like understand and receive this. And, you know, really quick, I just want to, I want to make a, a, put a pin in the fact that generosity is also about being generous with yourself. There are times where you will allow things to just become train brain because you're beating up yourself over a decision that you made. Or So generosity should also be extended to yourself. And sometimes that can come in the, the form of a reward for a, something that you've done that you feel really proud of. Early on in, in, in my journey, I didn't realize how much it, mattered to like celebrate my successes i was like oh i don't need that and i was on to the next thing and now i i understand it is it is an absolute like wonderful thing to experience success in a way where you're being generous to yourself where you're having a nice dinner out or you've bought yourself some kind of token that reminds you of that success that you had it's 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 real and it's something that I think is not, uh, it's not talked about a lot is how can you be a kind, generous person to yourself? When we are good, when we are solid, 
we're good to everybody else. Yeah. We are not solid and we're not, we're only giving you a certain percentage. And you know, if you feel like going out and buy yourself, like we just had a friend that just went out there and was struggling to mine a nice watch for theirself. And he finally just did it. And it was an expensive watch, 50, 60, 70,000. But he makes the money to do it. He did it. He just couldn't justify himself doing that. And he finally did it. And he felt so good about doing it that he wanted to go buy his wife one right afterwards too. And just because the joy that he felt the success, because he got to a level where he said, if I did this, I'm going to get this. And then he told himself, why am I going to do this when I'm buying a home? And he's stuff. talking himself out and of it. he's talking himself out of it. But you know what? That If that watch gives him joy, who the hell cares? Yeah. It, 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 when you spend that money and you do that stuff, it might be gone for a minute, but it's, it's past tense now. It's gone. You're forward. You're looking forward. And if you're spending that much money on a watch, you probably have the money anyway. So... Well, what that watch does for him, your pictures do for you. Yeah. It reminds you of an achievement, a place, a way that you felt, and and those are important. Like that that is what keeps making those deposits into the momentum that gets you onto the next space. Which makes him better to us. Yeah. Because he feels like he's achieved with his goals and now he has his next set of goals that he wants to do. Yeah. And his confidence is up. Yeah. Absolutely. It's way bigger than this like shallow idea that I just deserve. I deserve. It's this, um, it's like, I appreciate who I showed up for, um, to be in that moment. And that was a great moment and I'm going to remember it forever. And this is how I felt. Hey, it was milestone. Yeah, it was great. Well, again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Make sure you check out raiseupmindset.com and send us some questions. We're going to start answering some questions. And our next episode, we are going to be having some guest speakers. So we're we're excited for that. So We're trying to bring you another flair of some other people that we yeah. have too, that we do business with and stuff that we are like-minded people too. Yep. Yep. Because everybody, um, everybody has great ideas and we just want to share. So see you next time. All right. Bye.